Hey everyone, and uh, welcome to the To Be Silent podcast. So uh, in this episode, um, Brian and I talk about the concept of um, sacred space, and we talk about uh, the idea of heaven on earth, and um, and also uh, the after death experience. <laughs> so uh, I really enjoyed this conversation, and I hope you do as well. Talk to you guys soon. Anybody? Dude, I love your new chair. It looks like you're in a spaceship. Yes. <laughs> and, and the name was what finally convinced me. First of all, it was on sale. So I was like, okay, they're just trying to get rid of shit. So, you know, um, let's see if I move the right way. Oh, a little further. Emerge. <laughs> Emerge. It probably switched over to me. Like, oh no, yeah, you have to make sounds if you want. You have, can you do that again? Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, that's awesome. I love it. It's yeah. comfortable. That's great. Yeah, that's great. So it's like better than me propping with pillows and whatever else all the time you know <laughs> it's like it's like everything i have is old so it's like the tables everything that i use is a desk you know and it's like no normal chair that we have fits any of them well so yeah. i was like that's it fuck it i'm gonna get something that's adjustable so i can keep my feet on the goddamn floor and still you know not feel like a little kid where you're, you know like you're right here with the table trying to do stuff you know it's like yeah okay so i needed i needed something so that i could be at a normal height with the, with the desk <laughs> yeah man you're moving up in the world i like yeah, it it's right good. it looks good the color palette and Small everything increments. great <laughs> so so last night went pretty well. I mean, yeah. even though it was a little overwhelming for them, I mean, that's, that's, you know, part of it is, I mean, I have to laugh because of course I, I would probably do the same thing and question about this, that, or the other thing. So, well, you should clarify you know. too, last night, our live call with our members. Was right, 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 right. You know, it's like, I'm always, I'm, I've, I've always been a little concerned. I'm still always concerned about overwhelming people, but, um, yeah. but at the same time, uh no you know, it was really good you can't I, keep putting I, it off either you know yeah, it's like i i have um you know painting students and um on, on online and we do something similar to what we do on our live calls and um with into be silent and i was you know going over a lot of um like i was reviewing footage of what i've been doing on this painting that i'm working on and a lot of the techniques and the things that I was talking about was like, I could just tell that it was like a, a little bit of overwhelm, like in the same way, just because it was just like so much information and like so much nuance and like so much like, okay, like, but I'm like, and I could tell, you know, some people were probably feeling like, oh my gosh, that's like, <laughs> like you know like just too which much, color you know? do i use yeah. first dustin <laughs> right 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 and i was like and then and after i was like was that was that not and so last so last night right we had our call right and you did basically the same thing but it was awesome like it's it, it made me it was good confirmation for me in a way just because I realized how valuable it is, even when it seems like a, this like fire hose of information and detail and nuance. And sometimes even on like a level that's like, I'm not even operating on that level, yet, even though you're like talking to me on that or like, it's just, it's, I, you know, I don't know if that's even the right way to say it. Like, it's not like, oh, so I know what advanced. You it's just, it's just, you've just been studying this stuff for so long and it's just spirals deep that it's, um, but it's cool because when you go there, um, I think, what for me at least what i take away from it is like that that so much of like the the work that you're doing can be developed in such a rich and nuanced way that like every aspect of it is just replete with meaning and and significance 
And just for, for if people are listening to this later, like they'll know, we, like we were talking about creating sacred space, right? right. And, and so, I don't know, maybe you can talk a little bit more about that. We can jam well, on again, or whatever, again, but. You know, I mean, I don't want to repeat, but at the same time, it's like, it's good to know the context, right? So it's, you know, every tradition has some type of sacred space and, you, you know, a lot of times more than one, but it's usually built on a certain, you know, let's say a, it, 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 it has a certain construction, you, you know, for each tradition, for the most part, you know, some of them go by the directions and some of them go by, um, you know, the shape of the construction and all of that. But, you know, and it can be as solid as a, you know, cathedral, which is a sacred space, right. And, you know, elaborate and, uh, you know, as simple as a, uh, you know, stone circle, but it could also be something that's portable and and should be that you can open up anywhere you know you need to and it basically sacred space is you know sometimes it's a you know the the terms that we use you know can be a little <sighs> yeah i thought this part was good i like the this distinction that you make yeah. so keep going it's good because it's it's it's, 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 a, it's a different perspective yeah, I mean, it's like there's nothing more sacred than creation, right? So, and creation is all around us, and we're part of that, right? So, in order to, um, you know, a lot of people when they do energy work or, you know, spiritual work, right? It's a, you know, in one aspect of it is, you know, trying to manifest a better life for yourself, right? So, and, uh, you know, that's an act of creation, right? No matter how we do it, that's what it is. So, you know, sacred space just means that you've, uh, you know, you've built, you know, a, a space that you can construct or create, you know, what it is that you're trying to achieve energetically, right? Working on the energetic architecture of that, you know, and a place where it's like free of distractions and only has those things. It's like, the perfect workshop or the perfect lab or, you know, the perfect kitchen if you're creating a new meal, right? So it's like all the tools you need are there. You don't have to go out for anything. There's nothing that's lacking. <clears throat> it's perfect and perfectly set up for, um, you know, being ergonomical, you know, in a way that we think of it in a, in like a mental a way. New chair. Right? The constructs are there. So you've built this structure that, you know, is the bones of what it is that you're trying to achieve with the, you know, the, of course, the thing that you're trying to create is in the center of that, right? And so, um, like it would be if you were working on a, you know, like if you were creating some beautiful piece of artwork or beautiful piece of uh, woodworking or whatever, you know, your focus is on that centerpiece and that becomes the focal point of your whole workspace, right? <clears throat> and the workspace is set up for each person specifically the way that they work right so it becomes very personal as well and um you know and there i don't think there's enough emphasis put on that with you know a lot of these other traditions until people get into these upper echelons or whatever it is but and and even uh even with that sometimes not really it's sort of left up to your own devices with that and i i think that holds people back for a long time you know, and, and sort of makes the act of creation or manifestation, it makes it haphazard because they don't have, it's sort of like, again, like I said last night, it's like, think of an easy favorite meal that you're trying to prepare, but then, you know, try to prepare that, you know, outdoors in the middle of the woods or whatever it is, right? It's like, you know, it's not ideal, you know, set up, it makes it much more difficult. Something you could whip together in your kitchen that's got everything you need is not going to be maybe even achievable in, in a place where, you know, that's not the case. So think of a kitchen that you could just like, you know, magically, you know, spring up anywhere you were and you could prepare whatever meal you wanted because everything was there at your fingertips um, and you were intimately familiar with that. <clears throat> Well, that's the way sacred space should be, you know, in my opinion. I mean, I think that, uh, you know, when you, it's, it, it's worth the time to develop that structure so that you can, 
then you know, utilize it more and more and more and your results become more and more consistent and you carry it with you wherever you go. And so you're constantly in an act of creation, you know, and, you know, it's not just for those things that are, you know, that might be a little, a, a little too much right now, but the idea is that initially we use it for specific things, but later on we carry it around with us in whatever we do becomes that act of creation, right? Because, all of those things that we're creating, we're preparing within us, right? We're the center of that sacred space, you know? And so the structure around it supports what we're doing and, um, and facilitates it as well, right? So, you know, that's sort of the, the idea behind that, right? It's like, and we, we take the model directly from nature, right? It's like, it's not something that's, you know, <clears throat> is so uh, abstract or obscure, you know, it's like, look, you know, when we think of creation, the first thing I think of is, you know, birth from, you know, uh, and, you know, everything that we know of is, you know, sort of cocooned, you know, in a sacred space, right? Either, you know, uh, someone's womb or a, even an egg, right? It's all of these, you know, there's a container around this new creation until it can, you know, burst forth from that and enter the world on its own, you know, so, but it's a perfect, you know, it's a perfect space for that to be, you know, to be developed and, you know, that act of creation. I mean, we like to think of it as being, uh, you know, a spontaneous, instantaneous thing, which sometimes it is, but a lot of times, <clears throat> especially while we're working on this stuff, you know, the, this, a, a correctly built, a properly built sacred space, understanding of a sacred space and utilization of a sacred space lets us be able to start a creation and then build on it slowly. It doesn't have to be an instantaneous thing, right? It's like, oh, I have this section done. Okay, I have this next section. I mean, people don't conceive and then have a baby two hours later, right? <laughs> I mean, that'd be pretty scary, but, you know, but at the same time, <laughs> I mean, nine months is already scary enough as it is, right? So it's like, uh, you know, I should say nine months and 18 years later, you know, see ya. So it's like, but that's, uh, <laughs> um, but think about that, you know, so it's like, and, uh, you know, creations that we think of as situations in our lives. I mean, they can affect yeah, that's us a... as much as, as, an, as a new life or having to care for a new life and, you know, and, and even incorporates part of that as well. Right. So, uh, you know, that's a pretty, that's a pretty broad thing that your people are trying to do. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, another aspect of good uh, structural sacred space is that, you know, you're able to, you know, look at all of those aspects that it has to, that have to be involved with that. You don't leave anything to chance, right? It's, so it's like the length of time, you know, you know, the structural aspects, the form aspects of it, right? All the, all your senses, you know, engaged in that territory and you're building it more and more and more. And that stays there to some extent, you know, when you have that construction built, it's like, you know, it's like if you're working on a project, it's not like, you know, if it was you and you were, you know, had all that you needed in your studio, you know, it's not like when you leave the studio, you know, all the paint comes off your, you know, and you start over again every time you enter, right? It's like, no, it stays there. And that's the same thing with this, right? Is that, you know, those constructs stay there and they're sort of supported in that space. It's a container, you know, you know, kind of like this so hermetically, abstract. hermetically it's... sealed, you know, container that holds the essence of that, holds the yeah. bones of it, basically, so that when you come back, you're picking up where you left off, and you're adding to it until it becomes so rich, so real, that you can't imagine that it isn't. And so it, it would be harder to, you know, imagine that something isn't real than it is. And so that's when it's ripe enough to be, you know, 
plucked from that space and then released into your physical environment, right? Mm -hmm. So um, that's the rough idea behind it anyway, so. Yeah, it's. I feel bad because it's like, it's, it's so abstract. <laughs> When you it talk is about until it that you, way, until you do to... the work, right? And that's why I've started it, you know, instead of teaching it in a way that it's like the whole thing all at once, because it's just, you know, it seems like a monumental undertaking, you know, I mean, it's, 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 it's simple, but it's not easy, right? So, and, uh, but the idea is that by trying to, you know, get the concept of it and then start from the center and build it out right so that people kind of get it piece by piece and work on each aspect of it integrate it and then um you know move on to the next so that you finally you know by the time we hit the third or fourth stage of construction of this you know the understanding of it it's going to be you know they're going to have a better idea they're going to be able to sort of anticipate what comes next and you know how it sort of all uh, comes together. So, I mean, there's I don't think there's any other way to do it. Well, I think being completely overwhelmed. Yeah, I think one of the things that um, would be an interesting distinction to talk about is that is how um, within this model <laughs> of sacred space um, that you use, um, uh, there like every there are multiple different aspects to the, you know, like you're saying that surround, that sur surround you and surround what you're creating, right? Uh, and all those different uh, dimensions uh, correspond to like different aspects of the creation. So it's like you're, you know, yeah, you're thinking about like, when does it start and when does it stop and how long does it last and um, what's the broader context that it exists within and um, how does it relate to like you were saying last night like um, you know wisdom versus folly or um, poverty versus wealth and um, you know life and death and peace and strife and like all these different aspects of of, of anything that you're making and all the different qualities of experience that it can encompass in the ways that it's integrated into your life and, and all that. And so, and, you know, right. It reminded me of two things. It, 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 I remember um, when we first met and um, like, and so for people that don't know, I met you, we were in the Amazon and <laughs> we were actually, we're like in the middle of a, ayahuasca ceremony when I met you and so right right and so and that's kind of a funny story for anybody who doesn't know but <laughs> so I'll, I'll just tell it real quick but so everyone in in the we're in the middle of this we're on a beach in the Amazon and like there's probably 30 40 people in this big circle and everyone's like laying down and having their experience and it's been a couple hours already so we're already part way into it and um it was the second night uh of doing this in a row and um and yeah. And I remembered like I was so I, I got I stood up at one point because I instead of like just laying down and having my experience and being basically like overwhelmed by the experience. And I became like lucid enough to just want to get up and like move around and see what, you know, the shaman was doing and see what was happening with other people and stuff like that. And so everyone's just laying down there in their in the in their experience. And I come and I saw you and you were like sitting like with your spine erect and like your your you know you're you're kind of in like a kneeling position or whatever but i just like saw, saw you know it's like what's up with that guy <laughs> like <laughs> he's he seems like he's doing all right <laughs> you know like he seems like he's faring pretty well like he seems like he's really got his shit together <laughs> what's going on <laughs> you know and uh so anyway but but it was so that was kind of our my one of my first impressions of you but the next day when I got to talk to you and ask you questions about different things like seeing energy and, and, you know, ayahuasca and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and you were telling me, uh, you, you had said, I said, I was asking you like, Oh, you know, what, what different, you know, what kinds of like plant medicine, let's say would be good for helping to open your ability to see. And, 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 uh, and you were saying in reference to ayahuasca, you were saying that it, it helps you to um, 
tuned to different frequencies, right? And I remember right. you saying that almost like, and you were, you were making the analogy of like a, a radio, like XM radio and being able to modulate your frequency to tune into very specific frequencies, right? Different channels or right. perception right. or experience. And, um, and so I kind of think about this when it comes to sacred space. Like when you were talking last night, I was thinking like, well, how, like, if you think about something that you want to create or experience in your life and you make the analogy that that's kind of like being in, in the dimension where that thing exists already, right? right. Or like the frame of reality where that thing exists and, and you have that, or you're in that situation. Sure. Well, like creating a sacred space that takes all of these all the different aspects of that thing that you want into consideration in such a nuanced way is like having this super sophisticated radio tuner that helps you to tune to like that spot, that frame, that dimension of just exactly where you want to be. And right. I was like, wow, that's so that's, first of all, that's so cool. But also there's this kind of, I, I, it's like the, when when tip i think typically when we think about wanting to manifest something i think it from my perspective one of the norms that's kind of i i think that people have i know i did anyway was like okay well you think about oh i i have this want or i have this desire i'd like to be in this spot i'd like to experience this thing i'd like to change this part of my life but not wanting to be or being hesitant about being overly specific or being concerned about being overly specific <laughs> or saying like, right. you know, like I want this, but like only if it's not going to like do this or that or, 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 you know, whatever, not, not. And, and so taking, taking that like extreme level of responsibility for all the nuances of the thing that you want to create almost seems like, uh, like a kind of like a, who am I to say that I, you know, <laughs> want it to be like this with kind of, I, I, I don't know. I mean, how, how do you, how do you think about that stuff? Cause I know you've also said, I feel like you've also said before, like, don't hog tie the universe. Yeah. So how do you, and hog tie the universe in terms of like, don't be too overly specific about how that thing will come about. So I don't know, maybe you can kind of take all the, all that raw material of what I just said and <laughs> make some sense out of it. <laughs> well, I, I think again, it's, it's one of those things where, um, you know, hearing that sentiment over and over again, over the years for over the decades, really um, from different, uh, traditions as well, or people studying different traditions, you know, they're very, you know, some of them are just willy nilly, they'll just, you know, they just try to create whatever they want at the time without any kind of idea of, uh, you know, how it would fit in with the rest of their life or whatever. And sometimes, you know, it works out, but many times it, it sort of goes to the place where, you know, um, well, let's say the majority of time, it doesn't work. Right. For whatever multiple reasons the create you know manifesting something doesn't work right it, it just doesn't you know maybe the technique is wrong or the person doesn't have a good concept of how to do it or whatever it is you know sometimes it goes right <clears throat> and uh you know you do end up manifesting a situation or a thing that you wanted and but it sort of wreaks havoc with the rest of your life. That's a pretty common scenario because uh, you didn't really think about how you would integrate that or, uh, you know, it becomes overwhelming again, right? So, but sometimes it works out as well, but then repeating the process is difficult because you didn't really understand how you did it. It was sort of like, you know, my favorite phrase of, you know, every now and then somebody accidentally does something right, you know, and, and poof, look, look what's here without a leash, right? And so all of a sudden it's running amok in your life and, uh, and changes all these things. And then people are lamenting, right? It's like, I wanted that, but I didn't want it to 
ruin the rest of my life. It's sort of like the lottery thing, right? Where 95% of people are after five years, they're in jail or broke, right? It's like, that's a huge statistic. That's not, it's something we laugh about, but it's not really a laughable thing, right? That's sort of a phenomena that should be looked at. And it doesn't really, I mean, from my standpoint, it's not that difficult to understand. You take people who generally, you know, like that would not be the scenario, I don't believe, if the person that won the lottery was already extremely wealthy. It would just be added to the coffers. There's no change. They know what to do with it. If people are even in a moderately wealthy, you know, capacity, you know, it probably wouldn't have that effect or, you know, the temptations would be there to go beyond yourself. But, but you know, you, you might have the wherewithal to sort of rein it in, right? And know who to delegate certain responsibilities to so that you can manage all of that. But for somebody who has no idea and is, you know, living from hand to mouth on a regular basis, and then all of a sudden they fall into a pile of gold, it's going to be devastating to try to navigate that. And, uh, you know, and, and obviously 95% of the time it ruins their life, right? So, I mean, those are pretty incredible, you know, stats. So, um, and I look at that with any kind of creation that, or manifestation of what, you know, people are trying to do, right? I mean, let's differentiate those terms, right? It's like creation is like a process, you know, manifestation is like the end result, right? So, you know, when they manifest something, but they didn't take enough time to see how they did it, it's like now you're wondering, you know, the next time you try it, how'd you do that the first time trying to, you know, but it mm. could just be simply an alignment of everything at the time. And, you know, the desire, the need, maybe the anxiety around that, like, this is my last ditch attempt, or this is my whatever. And you get this fever pitch of everything just happens to align correctly and you get it. But because you didn't know systematically what you did, it's very difficult, if not impossible to repeat that unless you start from scratch again and learn how to build that up. So, um, yeah. And so all of those aspects, I mean, I think your analogy of the, you know, the super uh, receiver or whatever is a, is a good one, right? Because those signals are out there. And so, but those super receivers are pretty technical pieces of technology, right? It's like, you know, um, I'm sure I'm not going to use all the right terms, but I'm sure there's lots of transistors that, you know, modulate, them, you know, um, modulate different things that are coming in all at the same time. I mean, it's got to grab, you know, those frequencies out of the air or wherever it is, invisible things, right? And bring them through, you know, the right pathways in order to bring them all together and produce a very, you know, narrow beam from one station to the next, right? So we're talking, you know, a thousandth of a digital frequency, you know, to be able to tune into, you know, some radio station that you love yeah. in Tokyo, you know, or whatever. So, uh, you know, compared to all the other radio stations that are in the world, I mean, that's the idea with XM, right? Is like, you can dial into almost anything bouncing it off of satellites or whatever, but that's a pretty complex thing, right? Um, well, I mean, it's kind of the same with this, right? It's like, you want to, really have a good idea and build a decent receiver because all of those frequencies, all of that energy is just sort of in a raw chaotic state outside of us. Right. And we're a part of that as well. Right. So there's that reflection of that macrocosm, you know, within us or the microcosm in this case. Right. And then an even smaller, let's say microcosm of that is going to be the thing that you want. Right. So it's like you're rending the all down to a certain, you know, uh, bands of frequencies that come in and then that gets split again. Right. And so, it, you know, each one goes through a certain type of transistor or transducer. Right. That will will rend it into another type of energy. And then you're filling in, you know, um, the end result that you're looking for, right? That next microcosm, but it all comes through you, right? So, so that means that 
like photography, right? It's like, yes, the, the technology and the bodies of the cameras are, you know, important, but it's really the lenses that are, you know, all about the quality. So it's like, you know, there's a difference between, let's say, and maybe not as much, I'm, I'm really going back now to like SLRs, right? So it's like, um, you know, there's a difference between a, a lens on a Pentax, if they're even out there anymore, and a Leica, right? So there's a, or a Hasselblad, you know, like places that, you know, they spend everything on producing the most transparent, the most clear, the most precise grinding of those lenses, right? So it's like, those are where the expense comes in, right? So you're trying to, you know, you're the major lens for your creation. And the more precisely, you know, the more transparent, the more clear uh, representation of that you can have within yourself, the better, you know, your creation is going to be, right? So there's a lot of work that goes into this on ourselves, right, as well, because, of, you know, it's only going to be as good as the weakest link, you know, common, common understanding with many things, right? You know, your, your, your group of people is only going to be as strong as the weakest link is. That's where it breaks down, right? So the same thing with this. So, uh, you know, you need to work on that at the same time, but the, and then, you know, that's, structural idea of a sacred space that helps to take some of that and uh, you know kind of put it in context for you so that you can work on the different aspects of your creation within the perfect environment again and uh, uh, you know produce uh, most accurately the most accurate that you can for you know what your conception is in your head right and uh, and produce that as closely as possible I mean, it's i don't think that it's ever i mean could be perfect you know so but it could be just you know good enough you know to not upset the apple cart your life you know and move forward you know with some other aspect of the life integrated in a good way or you you know you have enough wherewithal to integrate it in a good way even if it's disruptive in the beginning and it very well could be disruptive in the beginning even in a good way right it's like it's amazing to see when you know really great things happen to people how they immediately adjust their life course around that thing but if that thing you know goes away then you're left adrift Right. So, and, uh, you know, hence we're back to the, the lottery, you know, thing. So it's, 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 it's all about the integration. And if you're not working on yourself, then, you know, you can do perfect sacred space, but it's just going to throw you into more chaos, right. Over and over and over again. So you're just repeating that process. It's the same idea as people thinking that, you know, buying more stuff is going to make them happy. And then they find out that it doesn't. And then it's, you know, it becomes this pattern of trying to fill a void that you can't fill with stuff, right? So it's like, you know, create from a place of, of, of wholeness as much as you can. And that means working on yourself and becoming the person that you want to be. The other stuff, you know, is sort of like environments that you occupy as that person. You know, that's the way I look at it. It's like, yeah, there's things like a new job or a new relationship or, you know, or the same relationship, but better, right? It's like, we always want to ask ourselves that. Do I need a new relationship or do I just need to make this one ideal? What's, you know, what's your, what's your fancy? You know, what do we, how do you want to do that? <clears throat> the same thing with, you know, finance, you know, do I need more money or do I need to be happy with, you know, what I have or not just in a content way, but like, can I, you know, can I work with what I have and make myself content and happy, you know, with that? Um, those are all things that, you know, good questions to start with when we figure out, you know, when we start to look at the, what do you want and why do you want it? Right. Those are, those are really, you know, great things. I mean, people, you know, is, is creating a more, um, 
let's say, a, a more in-depth and encompassing spirituality, just virtue signaling for you? Or is, or what is the reason that you want that? You know, what is the real reason that you want that connection, you know, to be stronger and, you know, really move into that territory and a much, you know, put a, a much greater amount of time in your life into that, right? What are the, re what are the rewards for that for you? You know, all those questions need to be figured out first, right? It's, the, you know, so same thing with health, right? Where's my health? What am I willing to sacrifice to get that level of health that I'm looking for? Am I willing to go to the gym five days a week? Am I willing to eat foods that I, you know, will grow to love hopefully later, but right now I want my fried chicken, you know, it's like, and I love fried chicken. So it's like, you know, I'm not slamming fried chicken. I'm just saying there's sacrifices there, right? I don't have fried chicken every day, no matter how, how much I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, those are the questions that we sort of flesh out in the beginning, right? It's why, you know, the first act of creation is not that sexy, right? It's not that complicated. It's like literally writing down, what do you want? And so many people get stuck on that. And then why do you want it? More people get stuck on that, right? So it's like, but it's so crucial to have that really, really down. And so that kind of brings it full circle back to like, can you be too specific? I think you can't be too specific with the end result. I think you can get too specific with how you want it delivered. And, um, and again, for me, it's like, I tend to leave that, you know, for, you know, the energies that, that be the powers that be right. Because it's like, why would I limit something that's unlimited? You know, my poor little head can only imagine it a certain way. And, you know, of course, I'm going to go for what I think will be the, the least cathartic for me. You know, nobody wants catharsis, right? <laughs> it's like everything wants to be smooth and stable and easy and no pain and no sacrifice. And, you know, okay, awesome. You know, it's like, but, um, uh, you know, as far as the delivery goes, you know, I tend to leave that up to, you know, the one. And I think, I mean, I think there is some interrelationship between that and, you know, how you construct your sacred space is sort of like Absolutely. having that energy flow through those, let's call them transistors at this point or filters, right? And so, because the filters develop as you develop yourself, you know, a better understanding and, you know, a more intimate understanding of how these things have worked in your life in the past, whether you knew it or not, and how what they things? can... Yeah, the 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 <clears throat> let's say the the bones or the structure of that sacred space you know these things are always around us <clears throat> we just choose to make it more you know obvious and what things are always around us the you know the the just the constructs of how energy moves and and works through us right i mean we're just part of a larger whole we're an aspect of the one according to this tradition, right? So, um, in fact, I don't really, well, that's not true. I do know a couple of traditions that separate us from, you know, from the one, you know, in some weird way, or at least people interpret it that way, right? But for the most part, you know, most of them say that we're just an aspect or a part of the one, or there's a, a drop of God within each of us or whatever it is, right? So, um, and I just look at us as part of nature, you know, it's like everything is part of the one. So there isn't anything that's separate from it. There isn't anything that's, uh, you know, removed from that good, bad, and different, which are all our own biases. Right. So, um, so how can we separate ourselves out from that? And, you know, it's like, we can't really. So, you know, our, you know, our sphere of sensation or that, you know, now we're getting into energetic architecture, right? The sphere of sensation, the aura, you know, around your body that, um, you know, is sort of what, if anything, makes you an aspect that's different from everything How? around you. I mean, you're, now you're talking oh, 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 about you mechanistic separate. You just things. mean separate. 
you just mean separate yeah like an, as an aspect an individual. Yeah, yeah yeah right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i always think that i'm just a tiny pov of the one point of view correct <laughs> i just clarify See, i was i was trying to be a smart ass <laughs> and thinking that i was a lot younger than i am and you know and and using like these terms that most people know but i don't really i would have to actually i actually had to put that in my head point of view pov you know <laughs> I know it rolled off my tongue, but it's not really that I'm not that hip. Right. So it's like, <laughs> so yeah. So the point of view, so it's like, okay. So my idea has always been, you know, adopting that idea that the one wanted to experience itself. And the only way that something could experience itself would be to limit itself because the only thing that, some the one has you know when it has everything it knows you know it's existing in the what we think of as the past the present and the future forever and ever amen um there's nothing that it can't do or nothing that it doesn't know and all of that so how would it experience itself <clears throat> only through limitation because that's the only thing that it doesn't have right so creating small aspects of itself and limiting them in some way, you know, the, the trickiest thing, making them think that they're separate from the one itself, because now we're independent agents walking around, hence the free will idea and all of that, right? Um, which again, you know, people debate on and off all the time, but I don't know, I, that seems like a, you know, sort of a argument of semantics, you know, more than anything else. So, um, but if that's my only job, then I'm going to give the one, you know, the, you know, I, I, I've told you in the past and, and other students too, it's like my only fear is that I die and, you know, I'm sitting in the green room waiting to, you know, have my audience, whatever. And, <clears throat> you know, the one walks in and some aspect and says, <sighs> I gave you the keys to the kingdom and you sat on the couch. It's like that. How did the, where did you even come up with that as like a scene in your head? Like, I, I don't know. I think it was just, you know, th through my experiences or whatever, and like really adopting that attitude of like, you know, did you remember I, when that occurred to you? That, 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 know. like that, that, that fear a couple, became... couple decades ago, maybe 25 yeah. years ago, something in that range. Yeah. You know, it's like any, I think I was probably at a crossroads in my life to some degree with certain aspect and thought, you know, do I just wuss out of this or do I, do I take the leap? You know, and do you have enough confidence in yourself that, you know, you can, um, you know, not just survive it, but, but, but actually thrive in that environment that you were, you know, the change that you were trying to uh you know go through and and i thought well you know it's like no <laughs> i don't have 100 percent confidence that i'm going to make it through this but that's what makes it a decision right and um but i'm confident that it will be an experience right and maybe one that i can really you know engage and and uh you know and if and if my life ends on this then you know the one will go like dude that was okay that was all right you know it's like, you that, remember, was, that was a good ride do you remember that was a good ride thanks was? for that what's that do you remember what the thing was that you're referring to uh and would do you will you share it <laughs> or is it too uh whatever i think it was i think at that time it was probably you know moving from where i was and you know starting my practice in a place where I wasn't sure that it would actually go mm. you know it wasn't mm -hmm. something so such a big deal I mean except but at for, the time except for like, existence you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know like it's it's not hard to you know not to mention the baggage that you would incur with like starting a business failing and then having to completely move to a different territory where let's say it was more likely that you would succeed um, instead of trying to convince a whole community that what you do is, 
is is valuable to them you know <laughs> from the start right uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> I was just interesting because like from, you know, I feel like seems feel to like, be a theme, right? I was just going to say it's kind of a theme <laughs> in your life or from maybe from your perspective, it's a theme in your life in it the sense that like, because I think that like you're like in some ways, maybe my, my 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 perspective on it is like you are so into this kind of work and, you know, you have been since a very early age, you know, um, and and just it's like it's so close to your heart it's such a big it it, you go you just dig so deep into it as deep as you can and you know and it and so it's one of those things where it's really close to your heart and just such a central part of your life and i think that for a long long time like for many years i you know you know, I, I don't know, I guess I kind of even feel this way in some ways about painting too. like, um, it's almost like I've chosen to make that leap of like trying to make it, you know, like a, like a, a business, a career, yeah, you know, yeah, like sure. all these things. And so obviously you have to like really be committed and really care about that pretty intensely to make it work. And you know, but the, but then I, I feel like when I think about like my, my perspective on like the, the world or like the average person, let's say, you know, it's like, they probably would think that like, I'm crazy. Why do you care about that so much? That's so silly. That's not very practical. Um, you know, on and on whatever. Um, and so, and I feel like it, maybe it hasn't even been until recently where, Uh, at least with like energy work and you know the type of spirituality that you know you've been involved in for a very long time um has become much more ubiquitous to the point where there's just you know huge communities of people that um and people all around the world i think that are just really interested in it you Mm -hmm. know craving it wanting to learn and you know but but you know for a long time it was like shunned or you know, strange or sure, you know, whatever. So, um, and so. to some people still, it still is right. So, yeah. I mean, it's totally. like, but that we could say that about anything really. Yeah. I mean, it's like, how many people do you know? I mean, really? No. I mean, it's like without the platitudes, you know, just like how many people do you know that are completely committed to their family? What do you mean? Like in, you know, in all aspects, like, you know, completely committed to their relationships, completely committed to their, you know, their children or raising good children or, you know, all of that instead of their own, you know, sort of like letting it go on its own, you know, or just the bare minimum of, you know, moving it along in that direction. I mean, if we look at anything, how many people are completely committed to their careers? How many people are completely committed to their health? You know, it's like, if we take any of those four basic territories, you know, most people are just sort of, you know, um, you know, they're doing it, but Mm. it's just sort of doing it, right? It's like, you know, I don't know what to say. I mean, that's, that's been, you know, my experience. It's like, I have, um, I have a few friends that are, you know, they're my models for uh, relationships, right? Because they're completely committed to their families. Like they just, it's always the first thing on their mind. You know, it's like the job is second, their play is second, their, you know, even their health takes a bit of a back door to it, right? And, uh, you know, and definitely, you know, they're, you know, in some ways, their spirituality, but not to the extent that, um, you know, they seem to have, they seem to have tied those two together pretty well. Um, but, uh, you know, they, they would sacrifice anything for their families, you know, and they've, and they have done so a number of times, at least the people that I'm referencing, you know, and so I look at them, and I'm like, hmm, you know, they are just, they were raised that way and they continue that process and their children will probably continue that as well. Right. Because that's, 
been, you know, that's the heart of their life. And so it doesn't matter what it takes. It doesn't matter the hours that you spend. It doesn't matter what you need to sacrifice. It doesn't matter, you know, everything else takes a second place to that. And so how many people can say that about any of those aspects for themselves? You know, it's like, are they totally committed to any one of those four general territories? You know, that type of committed where it's like, when you are in that, you lose track of time. You're not, you know, you're not on the clock. You know, you, you know, you forget to do other things because you're so involved with that. And, um, and there's nothing that's more important to you than doing that. And obviously you're getting something from that too. I'm not talking about, you know, martyrdom or, you know, sacrificing your life for something else, right? It's like literally you're getting more rewards than you could possibly, you know, that's the way I feel like I get more rewards from doing this and making that the focal point of my life than I get, than, you know, than all of the things, all of the time, all of the energy, all of the treasure that I've put into it. I've gotten out of that way more, you know, there's no way for me to make that equal in my mind, you know, that I can think of, I couldn't possibly do something that would make that equal, right? Because everything that I put into it, I'm getting, you know, <laughs> you know, more than 100% return on that, right? It's not even that equal, it's way above that. So, you know, if, if, if it wasn't, if I was like that with investments, you know, I wouldn't have to do this bloody podcast anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd probably do it anyway. Cause I, cause I like it, <laughs> but uh, you know, but that's the idea. Right. So, uh, so, but how many, you know, it's a good question for people to ask themselves and the earlier they ask themselves the better, but to ask it and to, you know, do you think of, that that's the thing that makes it that makes people uncomfortable that 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 quality or being around somebody that is that way about about any about a certain aspect of their life or do you think that that's the i think it makes people to you know i think it i think that's one of the key things that uh probably again unconsciously but for most people that's what um, they want to get closer to people that are that have that kind of commitment, regardless of what it is that they're committed to, right? They they feel like almost like I think instinctively that that will somehow rub off on them, and that they'll yeah I was gonna by say association I, or something. I thought I was thinking know? of it as a positive thing too, but it seems like you are saying that that's the thing that you are concerned that people would be made uncomfortable by that or put off by it or think it to be strange or weird or I just think in general I mean you know just in this day and age that uh where we have a lot more freedom than mm -hmm. than we you know have in, in the past at least around spirituality right where yeah. you know yeah 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 you know at this point at least there are very few places in the world where you're going to be burned at the stake for reading a book or sure, whatever yeah. it is right so yeah. Um, or, you know, getting caught praying, you know, a certain way or whatever, whatever it would be. Right. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. there still are places like that, unfortunately, but, but they're few and far between and we don't necessarily live in one of those. Right. So, um, yeah. So I think in that way, um, because it's sort of, you know, to some extent, let's not say the veil has been removed, but you know, the, the, the curtains have been parted so you can see through a little bit better. Right. And so, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's, but it's still odd for people because, you know, we're still sort of like just at the cusp of that. I really do believe that we're just kind of at the cusp of this sort of, um, territory where, um, some of us are, uh, you know, trying to break out of the, the limitations that very specific traditions have put on their teaching, right? So it's like, it's got to be within the context of the religion, right? Or it's got to be within the context of something like that. You have to learn all of these pieces to, you know, to, uh, you know, uh, 
really get the deeper understandings. And that is, some of that is just inherent in this stuff, right? But there are certain of us, you know, and of course that's laced within a certain vernacular and jargon that you have to learn. And if you're not a native speaker and it's in a different language, you're never going to get the nuances of that, right? So it's, it's kind of one of these things that it's almost self-limiting in a way, you know, but then there are those of us, I'm not the only one, right, that are trying to take those principles, those ideas, and bring it to, you know, Western speaking people who don't always have that vernacular, don't have that, you know, that understanding of the language and, and uh, translate it in a way that is understandable. Because for me, the primary thing is, how do you use it, right? I'm a very utilitarian kind of energy guy, right? So it's like, or spiritual guy. It's like, what can I use that will help me right now? Not after I'm dead, you know, then, then it's like flip a coin, right? So it's like, nobody knows, right? It's like, or the people that know aren't saying, and, you know, so far we haven't had a lot of people coming back and saying it's great or bad, right? Um, so, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, what can I do right now that will help me in this life, right here, right now, that'll help me. And then I can help my family, I can help, you know, produce better health for myself, and, and radiate that out into my family, my community, my friends, you know, the world. Um, and, uh, and, and let that branch out. So I, I think it's one of those times where, um, you know, that was instilled in me really early on. And, uh, you know, it's not something that I just sort of popped into my head. It was more of, you know, like a teacher actually saying to me, you know, it's like, don't worry about, you know, as, you know, as worried as anybody would be about dying, they should be equally as worried about where they came from. And so that sort of negates it, that whole, you know, to some degree, it negates the anxiety around that, you know, that end point. And um, I tend to think of, of um, you know, when I think about that idea, that was the context that, you know, he put that in. It was like everything you do spiritually or study or try to, you know, um, produce, utilize in your life should have a pretty quick effect on you in your physical life right here, right now, right? It's like, don't worry about, you know, that far off, hopefully, <laughs> you know, part where it's like you transition to something else. Um, you know, I, he, he would just say, you know, the best way to guarantee the smoothest ride through that scenario is to do your best right here, right now, you know, and that means why every, because it shows that, you know, you're, you have a, a really good understanding of this world and, you know, it's workings and what your, shows you your that? place in that, in that picture the smooth flow of your life, you know, how, how, and it doesn't always mean easy, right? But it does mean that, you know, the energy, you're able to pick a target and move toward it in a relatively, you know, um, well, let's not say easy, but in a, in a good flow. So, right? so, so this is interesting because um, we, uh, other than talking about, um, let's say lucid dreaming as uh, like a direct avenue of um, let's say practice for being in a non-physical state or, or even practicing, let's say like you've talked about practicing the experiential transition of dying or things like that. Right. Sure. So that's all that that's all part of like, yeah, developing that capacity or the proficiency in lucid dreaming. But, um, but, but this is kind of interesting because I don't feel like we've really talked a lot about because most spiritual traditions have kind of a, let's say like a, not just a lore, but like a, 
there's kind of teachings around death. Like you, you, you're always saying, well, the, the average, the, the norm, the normal, let's say, I, and I think you're just referring to like the Christian idea of like, you know, kind of be good in your, be good in your life or follow the model Christ in your, in your life now and when you die you'll go to heaven instead of hell basically or something like that or good things will happen instead of bad things will happen or you know whatever so it's a, a, a but a very like that as kind of like and then maybe and i apologize if that's oversimplifying it or anything like that like not i'm not not even I'm not even criticizing it all or putting it down I'm, I'm literally just saying like i guess that's best of my knowledge i mean that's a, that's part of it right and yeah and, and you say that so but but also, um, but when it comes to this idea of creation or creating the life that you want, manifesting things that you want, participating in creation in a very active way with a very high level of responsibility and living well and things like that, like most of the time when we're talking about the energy work or the practices or the, you know, the uh, techniques that we discuss and how to utilize them we're really thinking about like, how do we make our lives better right here, right now? And, and you're always emphasizing that as like the, the, the practicality or the tool, na the tool using nature of like this work, right? What are the results on and on? But it's interesting to hear you talk about that attitude or that approach to energy work and life as a preparation for death in its in and of itself it's almost like i think it 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 brings into light uh more a, a bit more clearly your your like attitude or your way of thinking about death right um and so i i don't know i just I've just Is there I, a question I, in there. There's no, no, I'm good. I'm just kind of like, <laughs> I just want to make sure I'm following you correctly. Yeah, no, I know. Well, so I, far. Yeah. So I'm far, just you're, kind of you're fleshing it. out what, I, yeah, I, I'm just kind of reiterating it back to you because uh, it's, it, it's just a little, I just, I, I guess for me, it's a little, it's just a nuance, just a little unique perspective of like, oh yeah, like that's probably, I don't know, part of the freedom and confidence that you feel around putting all of your attention on using your energetic practice to make your, make your life what you want it to be. Because in the end, that's the best way to prepare for your ultimate transition. Right. Because I mean, you know, again, when we look at an ideal, which we're all gauging against, right? my ideal life situation, my ideal relationship, my ideal health, my ideal success, my ideal spirituality, right? It's like all of those ideals, you know, are sort of like the epitome of what I would gauge where I am now and where I would want to be, right? So, and they become the judge, right? Of those, of where you are right now which is very uncomfortable for people, you know, a lot of times. It's why I think a lot of people don't actually utilize, you know, these ideas because it's very uncomfortable to be judged against something, an ideal, right? A perfection, if you will, or, you know, what you consider to be perfection for that, you know? <clears throat> and the reason is because once we do that, we have, you know, a metric that, is in our face, right? It's like, there's my ideal relationship. Here's where I am. How far, how different is where I am from where I would like it to be ideally. And so now we have markers to judge by and what can I do, you know, to bring it closer to that or actually achieve that. I and guess so my question that then is becomes, like that becomes sort of a, you know, that's very difficult for people. And, but, but I guess my question was, why is that? Why and how is the pursuit of making those aspects of your life, your into your ideals? Why is that the best um, preparation for death? Well, then I would reverse engineer it for you, right? So, 
you know, in not technically, but just in general terms, what is heaven? What is heaven? Uh, your ideal, <laughs> the place where you're most fulfilled. <laughs> right. The place where everything's the way that you want it to be all the time. <laughs> Exactly. Right. And so, you know, one of the admonitions in the Bible is how do you bring heaven to earth? Right. Well, how would you create heaven on earth? Yeah. But I think that the disconnection there or the disconnection in what we're like the, what you're putting forth or what I'm saying is like, I think there's also I think that there's almost like a sacrilegious kind of pers uh, own to the idea that heaven is where he heaven on earth or heaven itself is where everything is the way that I want it to be all the time or everything goes the way I want it to be want things to be you know like as opposed to who am i who who am i and isn't it so presumptuous of me to think that i know that that my desires or my wants are um in, inherently uh good or right or correct or okay or you know i think there's it's almost like there's this like outsourcing this idea of like I don't know what's best for me. The one knows what's best for me or the divine knows what's best for me. I, and, and my wants, the things that I want are probably flawed and probably short-sighted. And, um, and I, I think I just, I think that that's, it seems like that's a common view on that. Not, it's like, n yeah, not that, <laughs> my my desires are somehow in alignment with heaven on earth it's like my desire my desires are like totally screwed up and childish you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i mean so this is tying all these complex ideas together hopefully i'll do it as articulate as i can but you know forgive me if i don't um <clears throat> So if we're all aspects of the one, right? Each of us, each individual, from each person to everything that's in our physical environment is an aspect of the one, right? It's just a different amalgamation of energy coagulated to different densities, right? But if we break it down and get to that subatomic particles and all of that, it's just energy, just waveforms, particles waves. So, <clears throat> and it's all part of the same thing, right? So, and, it, you know, if we personify that in some way, you know, as most of the traditions do, they give it names, right? God, or, you know, the universe, or whatever, right? The one, the, these are all just labels for something that can't be labeled, but we have to use our language in a way that we can uh, sort of work through these ideas if we can, right? knowing that they don't really touch the whole, right? Even our conceptualization, conceptualization of these things is limited and not really touching on the actual or the absolute, right? So, but we have to utilize something, right? So, um, <clears throat> so when I, you know, when people bring that up, because it is a very common idea, right that like who am i to you know dictate what's you know i you know that it's ideal for me or whatever that that sort of concept but it's sort of like don't you think or do you think that you know the one is limited to you know giving everyone their you know what they consider to be their ideal you know if i'm trying to you know if i were the one you know, yeah, 
I hate even saying that, but, but if I were, <clears throat> and I wanted to experience myself and I made all these little aspects of me so that I could experience, you know, chaos and randomness through them and order as well, right? Through them, then what would, what would keep me from granting them, you know, if they, if they, uh, were able to channel that in such a way that, you know, channel energy in such a way that, that they could produce that or, you know, whatever the ideal scenario would be for them. Right. And then let them wander through that. Right. That's where the, that's where the tricky part comes in. The tricky part isn't getting what you want. The tricky part is surviving the getting what you want. And that's the thing, right? And I know most people are going to think, you know, like, oh, I'd like to take that challenge. You know, <laughs> I say the same thing on a regular basis. It's like, I, you know, I know it would be, but I know how difficult it would be to, you know, get exactly what you want and then try to live a good life within that, you know, structure within that context. It's just another limitation, right? And one that you're not familiar with, right? Only in certain aspects from, little, you know, again, living hand to mouth gives you almost no, you know, you might as well say that's, that's you know, living hand to mouth is earth and heaven would be, you know, winning the lottery. I mean, I hate keep coming back to that, but it's like, but the person that's living on earth has no concept or the most, you know, the tiniest, uh, you know, concepts of what living in heaven would be like, right? Or living in financial, you know, independence completely. And, and so they wouldn't know how to maneuver in those waters, right? So to speak, because they have no background in it. They have no idea what to do first. They wouldn't know, who do I call a financial advisor? Well, you know, then, you know, Here's where it gets tricky, right? Because it's like, you have no experience with that. Do you get, you know, do you get the most expensive firm? Do you get the cheapest firm? Do you, you know, you're worried about embezzlement. You're worried, you know, you, all these things start to creep in and create a different environment from you than what you were expecting. You know, you're dropped into paradise in a certain territory, but you don't know how to live there. You don't know what to do there, right? It's, it's uh, you don't know how to maneuver in those waters. So, you know, from a different aspect of, um, you know, why the utilitarian idea behind all of these things, why set up these, you know, ideals in those, you know, generalized four territories, why set up those ideals and measure that and try to produce it as closely as possible, because it's like everything else that we do, right? If I want to, uh, if I want to, you know, let's say I just want to lucid dream. Let's not get too abstract, right? Let's say I want a lucid dream. You know, how much time are you, you know, why do you want that? You know, and then how much time are you willing to spend on that? You know, and what kind of utilitarian sort of, you know, um, what are you going to get out of that, right? It's like all of these things have to be decided ahead of time. And then how much time are you going to spend doing it? You know, and, and how do you do that? And what brings you closer and closer to that realization? Well, the closer you are immersed, you know, or let's say the more immersion you have in that territory, as much as you can manage, uh, is going to get you closer and closer, you know, let's say on the same wavelength as that event right? So if I'm only reading things about lucid dreaming, if I'm only practicing all of the pieces and components of, you know, being able to do that, the induction techniques and all of that stuff, you know, if I'm only reading about other people that have done it, if I'm only reading, you know, like I'm completely immersed in it, you're going to have, you know, way more success in, in, in a much quicker way than anything else. And of course, the more that you engage in that after that, right? And the more you still do those techniques and the more you still, you know, sort of my, my thing, you know, dissect it and really try to, you know, 
uh, like a professional athlete, every aspect of the game I'm trying to develop in myself, right? To the nth degree so that when I'm playing, I don't have to think about the structure. I don't have to think about the rules. I'm just in the form of it. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm graceful and uh, and I see things and can set things up ahead of time so that it looks like it's effortless for me to flow through that game and to score or to do whatever my job is in that game, right? At a super professional level. Well, it's the same thing with this, right? And the more that, you know, we could say in some way that that, that um, you know, that elite athlete, right? Like uh, Michael Jordan or, you know, um, Ronaldo or any of these guys that are just super professionals. They are the game, right? Every aspect of the game, they live it, they breathe it, they don't do anything else. They've sacrificed a lot of things to be able to do, to be the game that they love so much. And because of that, they are the super elites of that. They're the superstars of those territories, right? Um, and so I think the same thing with, with this, right? Everything that I, you know, like I have my ideals and I move toward them and the closer I get to them, uh, you know, I mean, I can't do that without learning about myself as well, right? And maybe adjusting, you know, my plan along the way. I'm always course correcting for those things and trying to get closer or, or modifying that ideal, right? So that I can, you know, I would be really happy with this. And, um, because I'm trying to bring myself to something that would equate what heaven is supposed to be. And if I want to access that being, you know, then I have to bring myself as close to that as I could possibly be. And now we've come full circle around from what the, most of these traditions are saying, you know, their equation is, follow all these moral rules, follow these commandments, do this, you know, depending on which tradition it is, do all these rules, act this way, and you too can be whisked away to this heaven, this perfect place, right? So in a weird way, they're saying the same things. It's just that we take a more active role in it rather than just trying to abide by the rules set down by a tradition, you know, set down by men, right? It's like um, to go someplace that they've never been. So, you know, it's all just, you know, it's contrivances to keep people under control. I mean, we can debate that, but, but that's the idea. But for us, it's like we want a more active role in that. And there's no reason that I can think of that would make me uh, think that in some way that that's some kind of sacrilege right? Because that's, that's like the little finger of your hand saying, you know, uh, or your head saying that the little finger in your hand offends you, you know? So it's like, come on, it's all part of the same body, right? So, you know, it has its role, it needs to know what, to, you know, what to do and what's expected of it, right? So um, the same way with the one, I'm just an aspect of the one trying to, again, my end goal is to try to produce from my own, you know, my own free will, you know, produce an experience for the one so that it can realize itself in some way. And that's kind of why I've always put spirituality first, because, you know, I'm, it's like I'm going back home, right? I'm, I'm trying to get the ultimate realization. You know, I'm trying to show the one through my horrible twisty turny life and you know backstepping and going to the depths of despair and coming up to the heights of ecstasy and all of those things to give it as full a picture of itself as it can possibly have through me right and it's i can't think of a i can't think of a more uh exciting life than that i can't think of a more fulfilling life than that you know, I mean, it's not always fun and easy and whatever, but it's like, but I can't, I can't, you know, it's one of those things where it'd be like, ask Ronaldo when he doesn't think about soccer, you know, it's probably like very few and far between places, right? It's like, I'm, 
um, even with responsibilities and whatever, I bet the guy is dribbling in his head all the time, you know, <laughs> or trying to figure out new ways of doing things or, you know, it's like, it's constantly there. You are the game, right? So um, you're bringing yourself at a frequency level that matches as close as possible the ideal that you're going toward. So if we're trying to match the frequency of heaven, then those four general territories, in my opinion, are the thing that is going to, you know, sort of, you know, help you maneuver through this physical life. And you bring yourself to that as close as possible, that heaven on earth, if you're trying to really engage those four, four territories. And, you know, obviously not everybody does all four, but, um, you know, like my, my friend with the, the, that the family is everything, right? It's like, that's his primary. And through that, he finds his spirituality. Through that, he finds his success. Through that, he finds his health, right? They all hold some place, but it's like, it's through your, you know, focal experience that, you know, the thing that you're most immersed in, you know, tends to radiate out into those others and either, either you know, ostracize them and kick them out of the scenario or, you know, to the extent that you could, and, uh, or you're incorporating them in to what degree is, you know, in your way of thinking the best for you. But all of them are acceptable. That's the other part. It's right. Because it's like, you know, the one didn't say, well, I'm going to make, you know, Brian, this aspect, and here's your job. I mean, this is a destiny thing, right? Like preordained type of bullshit, right? sorry, but that's what it is. You know, it's like for the, you know, cause I mean, anybody that has kids, it's like, all right, I'm, I'll use myself, you know, how long can you do those, you know, six or eight piece puzzles, you know, when they're really, really little, you know, and they want to take it apart and build it over and over again, even though they, you know, even when they get it, they want to do that over and over again. I mean, my eyes are like crossing, you know, after about six times, you know, I'm not extremely tall, you know, it's all cute and it's all good. And, you know, but, you know, I don't know if it's just each successive child, it's like, okay, it's, it was 30 times on the first one. Now it's, you know, by the time number five comes along, it's like six is my limit. <laughs> it's like, you're done, right? So, uh, you know, and how much, you know, we're talking about the one, something that's omnipotent, omniscient, right? It's like all powerful, all knowing, all times, and it wants to experience itself. Now, what fool would think even come up with the idea that, you know, that that being God, whatever you want to call it, would give everybody, you know, a man, you know, complete, you know, destiny encapsulated, what would be the point? It'd be like putting one of those child's puzzles together. It'd be, in, how do you, how would you experience yourself through that? It's not, it's the randomness it's the, you know, either failing or succeeding in that chaotic space, that bringing order to chaos, right? Finishing the puzzle in a good way, you know, that, uh, you know, would give it, you know, some type of uh, almost, you know, in a way, an independent point of view of working through all those things, you know, it's like the old... Uh, wide, wide world of sports, right? The victories, the triumphs, the agony of defeat, right? All of those things it experiences firsthand through you because as an aspect of the one doesn't negate you feeling deeply the triumphs, feeling deeply the disasters, you know, feeling deeply the, the anxieties, the inconsistencies, the questions, all of that, which it doesn't have. It can't because of what it is. So it could experience it through you. So maneuvering through your life and trying to build something that is, you know, that's important for you, but doing it in the best way possible, you know, and going through all those things, you know, it's like, uh, I feel like that's, that's what we're here for.
right? It's to try to maneuver back to, you know, the one, you know, maneuver and, you know, going from nothing, you know, going from something that comes here with little understanding and trying to figure out the physical world and figure out, well, Jesus, figure out relationships, right? I mean, we're still making jokes about that, right? Like men and women, you know, that's <laughs> nobody, either one hasn't got a clue about the other one or just the cursory aspects, right? But I mean, we're still making jokes about that. So it's like relationships, you know, if you want to, you know, if you want to just, you know, isolate yourself, but still experience stress, just have relationships, right? <laughs> it's like, you're financially independent, you're, you know, you have perfect health forever have relationships, you know, because <laughs> that will, that will challenge you on a regular basis. There's nothing more challenging than, you know, I swear, there's nothing more challenging than dealing with humans, you know, and, uh, and especially the ones you love, you know, it's like, it's, it's like you're constantly, you know, sort of adjusting and, 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 and trying to enhance it even more. And, um, dissipate the disappointments or the whatever, right? It's like you want to be completely, completely immersed in all of those aspects of your life, in my way of thinking, you know, and it's just that for me, you know, picking that, it wasn't a conscious choice in the beginning, it just was, right? That, that I was, that I know of, you know, it's like, I can tell you from, from my aspect my personal you know thought process I, it wasn't like i sat down one day as a little kid and said like okay spirituality is going to be the thing that i focus on my whole life <laughs> <laughs> and that'd be insane right it'd be like get you off to a monastery dude you got born in a wrong place at the wrong time you know it's like you need to be the little uh, golden child somewhere. You know? It's like, not that I would be, not that I would call myself that, but you know, that's it. So it, but it just, it fascinated me more than anything else. Now that could have been, you know, I've said this before, it could have been from isolation. It could have been from anything, but it was the thing that I focused on most and have always focused on the most. So, um, and so that thing is how, you know, I uh, maneuver through, you know, all the other, the three territories. It's the thing that pervades all of them and binds them together. And, and you know, in my way of thinking, creates them to be, um, you know, all of the three territories to be really, really good, right? And moving toward perfection, at least the perfection that's in my mind, right? Not some ideal that somebody else has created right it's for me what that is <clears throat> because i know when i go after what i want <clears throat> i mean the one only wants what you want for yourself right because it wants a unique point of view it wants to experience it from a unique point of view it wants to experience itself from a unique point of view so why would i not be all in on that whether I come through the end and straighten my tie and walk into the, you know, the sunset, the hero, or whether I come in, you know, completely bloodied up and, you know, you know, skidding into home plate, you know, it's like ragtag, no clothes, whatever, scuffed from head to toe, beaten and battered. It's like, it's still an experience for the one, right? It's like, dude, that was freaking awesome. You know, I especially loved it when your nose got ground off, you know, it's like, Jesus, <laughs> that was some searing agony there. <laughs> I, you know, I'm just, it's like, you can't, you know, people often ask this, you know, question and it was like popular a while ago. And I think, you know, there's a deeper level to that. Like, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? You know, it's like, you know, as long as you're completely engaged in your life, that you can't fail, you can only fail to achieve certain things that you've set up for yourself, or maybe that you've taken on from other people, including your parents or including, you know, significant others or children or God knows what, right, or colleagues, friends, whatever. It's like, no, 
It's like you can't fail if you're completely engaged in your life. It's not possible, you know. The only way you can fail is to, you know, just sit on the couch and atrophy, right? Don't be engaged in anything and don't, you know, even then you're still, you know, of course, this is a judgment call on my part. It'd be like, okay, well, now the one is experiencing somebody who's just apoplectic, you know, and like ridiculously, you know, again, my opinion, you know, this is not a, this is not a life worth living as far as I'm concerned, but maybe for the one it'd be like, hmm, interesting, not, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, you know so you know I, I just feel like that's that's sort of the way that I engage these things you know and uh, and how I think about them it's a long way from sacred space but I could tie it back around to that you know no, I don't same, think it is Not same, really. same idea right where you were yeah. asking me how like my life you know is sort of utilitarian toward, you know, an eventual moving on or, you know, what would you move into mm. because of that? And it's like, I'm, I'm trying to produce as much as I can that, you know, my ideal of heaven on earth, because when I do that, I put myself more in alignment with that vibration. Right. And so, uh, you know, we move into that. If you make yourself subservient, if you make yourself, you know, uh, you know, a doormat turned the other cheek for every situation and whatever, I mean, and you feel good about that or you're okay with that, again, that's just another, you know, another perspective for the one to sort of go through a life, right? And you will probably move into that thinking, you know, that that is your heaven, you know, so until, you know, in those places, I mean, it's all speculation, but my thing is that, you know, you get there, and, you know, and it'll be like that for a while until you get bored of that, which it'll be like what? It'll be like what you've idealized your whole life. You know, you're so talking for about a, when you die. So for a Christian, it's going to be a heaven where you're sitting, you know, with little wings and, you know, uh, with angels flying around and everybody just like gazing up at this white light and adoring and, you know, whatever. Until those people start to have this little, which they can't even, you know, it's like blasphemy. Why do you even that, to believe, I don't want to get even it. say that at this point is like, you know, until you start to have this thought that like, is this all there is? <laughs> They're like, oh, you would never think that. Wait, I'd be so, like, but why do you? Yeah, no, but I, think I know I would. <laughs> this is almost like a good topic for like another call yeah. or whatever. But like, but like, why do you think that? Why do you think that that's like so? But you so just to be clear, like you're you're saying that hypothetically, when uh, when a let's say a a, a devoted Christian dies, like that they will, that when they die or when they pass, they will experience heaven as they've conceived it to be for, for whatever length of time or time, their experience of time in that uh, post yep. human life experience state yeah. of after death or whatever, until they have this question of, is this all there is? Or why do you think that that's how that will go? It seems to be, you know, and again, for me, it seems to be, it, it, you know, it wasn't, I mean, that's again, not, because you're original, basically that's saying that's not you know an original it, idea from me, just so that everybody's clear about that, right? Okay. It's because you're basically that saying that, like, because, that's what you think happens after you I die. think that if that's people, what happens. Ex, you're saying people experience what they think is going to happen or what they have, have hypothesis. Isn't that what we do here? What? <laughs> <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> People experience what they think about most in their life. You know, if they're constantly griping and bitching and moaning about their life experience, they're going to produce more of that. If they're constantly, 
in a good place and happy with, you know, maybe not happy, maybe happy to, but they're, you know, they understand and they have enough right now and they're moving towards something else and they can, you know, envision a grander part for themselves and a grander life for themselves. They're going to move into that the longer that they can hold that vibration, right? I mean, you know, we start using terms like vibration and frequency. I mean, they've gotten a bad rap, but I mean, really, I mean, these are scientific terms, right? They've been used in a kind of a woo woo way, but you know, again, frequency, right? We've talked about, you know, like the XM radio. I mean, those are frequencies, right? It's like the vibration of, of, of atoms is a frequency, right? It's like light is a frequency. So it's like, but, but that's the idea. The more that we entrain, but there's just, but it's just an analogy for, it's just an analogy for I mean, the, in a, in a weird way, it's actually, but I don't mean it's, you know, an, I would say, I don't know the mechanics of it. I mean, I can't, but I can see the end result of that. And that's a very consistent thing. Yeah. Which, which it gets sort of colluded in with like, you know, the secret and all this other stuff, you know, which just, you know, the, the initial idea was correct. It just didn't go far enough. It's just like the frequency thing is like just a generic, not a generic, but like a, a generic way of talking about like, a your, little bit sens- more of a sensory you know, experience. That's right. But, but that's it's like, right. so it's like, it's like every aspect of your five senses is, can you can say is like, well, that's all just your experience of different, different frequencies through the five senses or through Correct. In, in these different dimensions. Right. right. So, and we've yeah. got a perfect vehicle to, you know, adapt to this physical environment. Right. So, right. You know, I mean, we still don't know how we see. Right. But we just, know? yeah. So, but we do like it the, and we've it, adapted everything around that construct, you know, to some right, degree. Right? right. It's just, right. we're not seeing the thing. We're seeing the light reflected off the thing, right. whatever that is. Right. 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 So, and, uh, and we know that the essence of all of that is vibration, frequency. Frequency. Yeah. Yeah. So. Waveforms of energy. That's all it yeah. is. And so, you know, and if that's how we maneuver in this extremely dense physical realm, you know, this is very difficult to do that here, right? So, but we do know pretty consistently that if we, um, if we're constantly tuning ourselves to something other than where we are right now, that's how we move from one, you know, scenario, let's say life situation to another, right? It's like, first, I have to have the idea that there's something more that I would want to be engaged in. And that's what you're saying about, like, if you're experiencing something, the first thing that initiates a shift in that experience is the thought that it could be different. That's right. That's right. You're saying, like, and then the more I bring my thoughts there, and then the more I, you know, the next stage I'm speaking about it, the more that I actually try to engage it in whatever way I, whatever cursory way I can initially, and then make it richer and richer and richer. And then I move into that scenario, or if it's really done very, very well, it seems more like the scenario morphs around you, right? It immerses you in it. Not that you're stepping into something, but it just, it comes from you and it's built out around you. I mean, and I, you know, and why would I think that that process would be any different, you know, moving on? It's like, if I'm producing what I would consider to be heaven on earth here, why would I think, you know, that it would be any different somewhere else? that I would move into the thing that I created the most, you know? And if we go with the Christian idea, and I think it's in other ideas too, but, you know, the, the terminology I only know from that Christian side, which is, you know, purgatory is sort of like the, the little suffering that you have to go through before you enter that state of perfection, you know? But it's like figuring out the, you know, the little things that you got wrong or the little things that you you went through or the places where you made the mistakes and seeing it clearly how to rectify that and make it better and not do that again or you know depending on what it is that you're trying to do so um i think that that's like a staging area you know how do you transition do you transition directly from being human in this very tough difficult world into 
now I'm in this ideal realm, you know, heaven ish. And so, uh, you know, maybe a little bit of a transition would be a, a merciful thing to do, you know, <laughs> so, you know, instead of popping you into heaven, like the winning the lottery, you know, <laughs> where you could fail really quickly, <laughs> you know, so, uh, you know, a little bit of a transition so that you kind of get this, you know, the lay of the land and, you know, make firmer these ideas so that you can, you know, create in that place, the way that you, you know, and experience it in the way that you want. Again, just another, an end, a stage in an endless cycle, right? Because, you know, if you, there's so, just, there's just as, here's something that I would, I would not be convinced otherwise. There's just as much of the one in our physical surroundings in this physical environment as there is in heaven, whatever that heaven would be. What do you mean after death? Yeah. And just as much physicality or non physicality doesn't matter because it's everywhere. It's, you know, if we go by those ideas, if we start, if that is our, you know, if those are our ideas that we're going on to start with, that it's everywhere, it, it's, it's, in, it's, it's everything. It's, there's nowhere that it can't be. There's nowhere that it isn't, right? And so um, good, bad, and different, it's everything. So, you know, why would you think it would be, do you think heaven's the end? Well, that's what that tradition would tell you, but, you know, my experience would be that it's not, you know, that it's, you know, that it's just one more, you know, one more spiral in an infinite spring, right? So that, uh, you know, you experience that for a while, then you, then you move on to something else, but the rules remain the same. You're always, you know, a POV of the one. You know, and you're always just that, creating or experiencing what you think about most or what you project to. Yeah. So each successive stage becomes more of a training ground for the next successive stage, you know, from that heaven aspect, you know, maybe, maybe from there, it's like, oh, you know, when you're done here, uh, you get to be the angel in charge of the, you know, I don't know. Andromeda, you know, who the hell knows, right? It's like, oh, damn, let me stay in this perfection place for a while. This is like, I'm really comfortable here. I don't want to go there and have to deal with, you know, sounds like a lot of work, planetary <laughs> aspects and suns in the right place and blowing stuff up and, you know, make creating other things. And oh my God, that sounds so difficult, you know. <laughs> who knows, you know, but I, my idea, you know, that part's kind of fooling around but at the same time but i do believe that it is just this infinite spiral that you know that as long as you're doing your best in in every territory that you find yourself in uh there's no failure you know as long as you're doing your best you know it's like you do your best in every situation whether the outcome is what you want or not you're still you know, you still succeed, you're not failing. So, and it sets you up for the next one, whatever that is. There you have it. Thanks, man. You're off and running. <laughs> <laughs> off to your next ideal. Yeah, totally. <laughs> That's it. Engage, immerse yourself <laughs> in nature and <in> painting. <laughs> Very cool. All right. Well, thanks. No problem. Have a good one. Yeah, you too. I'm off to do my next thing. All right. <laughs> Enjoy. I will. <laughs> All right. I will talk to you later, man. All right. I'll see you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs>